30 days earlier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he's going, I hate to tell you this, but we're going to have to change everything. And so, um, you know, Tom had come and said, you know, I'm looking for uh, an idea. He said, I, I, I want to romanticize the brand. Johnny Corey had a daunting task, but one he embraced. La Russa Brands was changing to Gia Russa, and he had to come up with a new look for the packaging. I start sketching, and uh, you know, it was, I knew what I wanted to do um, because I was a big fan of mascots. I was a big fan of icons like Jolly Green Giant, uh, the Michelin Man, and so forth. And in the Italian culture and their brands, you saw a lot of icons and mascots as well. Mm -hmm. As an artist, you, you, you tend to, to reflect back on your childhood and to your experiences, and you look for inspiration. And I had, I had become inspired by thinking about my grandfather. He was about 80 years old. Mm -hmm. I was about eight years old at the time, and often he would come to me and say, at the end of the night, he would say, you know, Johnny, you know, can you help me in the garden? It was really, it was really nice, and he was so humble, and he had such a good heart. Everything he grew in that garden, it was pretty massive. He gave it away. He gave it to friends and family. Now, often, it was always towards night. It was always like the twilight hour. We would begin watering plants and pulling things, tomatoes, cucumbers, carrots, and what have you. At that moment, you know, I start reflecting back on how beautiful it was because it was twilight outside, the stars began to, to form, the crickets were, were sounding off, mm -hmm. and it just really felt good. And I just never, never forgot it. So when it came time to do the, the brand, I reflected back in a, in a big way and thought about the, that experience. As you can see in the painting, that's how it was played out, that starry night in the field. Now he needed a centerpiece and little Gia, as they call her, was born. I just felt uh, that using a little girl was just a little bit more cute and sweet rather than a boy. And I just felt like it would appeal more to, a few, to, um, to the woman shopper. Mm -hmm. And I think, it's, I think it's been wonderful. I think it's one of those things that, you know, in great brands you trust. And you need to trust in your brand. And you need to trust in the icons. I had to commission an artist from New York City mm -hmm. named Canuto Craft. She was wonderful. She had that mystical kind of vibe in the way she handled her paintings. Mm -hmm. So we worked over a period of about six months on it. Uh, at the time, you know, there weren't any text messaging or, you know, so we worked primarily over the phone mm -hmm. and through email. And it was really, it was really great because she would make a change to the painting. And of course it's oil. So, you know, you gotta watch what you do with it. Along the way, the boss, Tom Zayden, gave his input and his approval. Mm -hmm. There was a lot riding on it. At the time, we were just a brand that just existed in mainly three states. It was Ohio, uh, New York, and Pennsylvania. And so the importance of this brand was we were just now finding our way into the Florida market with Publix. And they needed the brand to connect in a different way than the previous brand that it was. So there was a lot of work and a lot was riding on this piece. Why do you think it works so well? I mean, why do you think it resonates with the shopper? And that's the most important thing, right? Yeah, of course. Again, I mean, I think the trust factor is there when I think everybody can read into it very well. They see something they can trust. Again, it's that, that majestic feeling that they get from it. She looks like she's full of wisdom. Uh, looks like somebody you can trust. And it's different. You know, it's very different than, than all the other mascots or, or icons that you see out there. A lot of thanks to Tom because he had given me the opportunity, relatively a young guy still, and he gave me an opportunity basically saying, here's a white canvas, do what you please, I know I'm gonna love it. You know, which I really appreciated because you just don't get those kind of opportunities that often. What's it like going into the store and seeing your work on the shelves? You know, uh, the very beginning, moments of that was was really exciting. I was in South Florida and I was with Tom again and I think we were either in Miami or South Beach. We were in one of the public stores and for the first time I was walking down the aisle and he said, I think it's here in the store. He goes, let's take a look. So we were walking down the aisle and I saw that, that blue, that distinctive blue from down the aisle and I started getting really giddy and Tom was getting giddy. We both were getting excited like little kids and I was like literally jumping up and down. It was like really super exciting. And, you know, I felt like, now I know what that feels like if you're a musical artist, what it, what it sounds like or what it feels like to hear 
your 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 first song on the radio. Yeah. You know, it had to be the same idea or the same feeling because that's what it felt like to me. Now when I see it, you know, I, I don't think much of it because it's it's been there for so long. But right. I'll never forget that first year. You know, it was just it was it was magical. Mm -hmm. 